Today I have three huge new features in ServiPod to share with you. This will be a game changer, especially if you work with any real-time communication, like doing a chat application or a game. I'm Victor and I'm the founder of ServiPod. I am excited to talk about the release of ServiPod version 2.1 codenamed Expressionism. Let's dive in! For those of you who haven't heard about ServiPod before, it's the missing server for Flutter. We have built a complete open source backend in Dart. If you're a Flutter developer, you feel right at home and won't need to make that context switch between languages. ServiPod comes with everything you need to build your backend. An ORM for your database, great caching and logging, but we also have support for uploading files, handling authentication, streaming data, scheduling tasks, performing health checks, and deploying your server. The really cool part is that you write your methods in your server and ServerPod will analyze your server code and automatically generate a client API. Calling a method on the server is as easy as making a local method call. If you just want to build something simple without the database and all the bells and whistles, you can use ServerPod Mini, our lightweight version of ServerPod. With a 2.1 release, we have added a getting started guide for Mini which will get you started in minutes. In fact, we completely revamped the documentation to make it easier to get started and to find what you need quickly. All right, back to the new features. Have you felt like real-time communication is hard? I have great news for you. The first feature we're releasing is called streaming methods. It allows you to return a stream from an endpoint method on your server instead of returning a future. This allows you to stream data by yielding a series of values from the method. It's easier to explain if we look at an example. In this very simple example, we return a stream of integers from our endpoint method, which we call countdown. Let's add the actual countdown here. We create a loop where we count down from 10 to zero. From the method, we yield each value, which will then be sent over to the client. Between each value we send, we wait for one second. In this example, we're sending integers over to our app, but we can send any primitive Dart type supported by ServerPod or even complex data models. You can also leave out the stream's type and it will be treated as a dynamic type. This way you can mix and match the types that are passed in the same stream. So this is really cool, but what does it look like on the client side? More good news. The client side of the equation is just as easy as the server side one. Let's have a look. To access the stream, we just call our endpoint method. We access it from our client object like any other endpoint method. Now we can use Dart's await for syntax to get the values from the stream. In this simple example, we just print them to the console. If we fail to connect to the server or if the connection is lost, we will receive an exception. So it's very easy to handle connection issues and to reconnect to the server if necessary. It's also possible to throw a serializable exception on the server and catch it in the client. This can be super convenient for handling errors. Finally, streams are not just one way from the server to the app. You can also post streams as parameters to any endpoint method. What is really neat with the new streaming methods in ServerPod is that ServerPod's client libraries handle the lifecycle of the underlying WebSocket connection. Concurrent streams are piped through a single connection, making it as efficient as possible. The connection is kept alive as long as an open stream uses it. That's a quick overview of ServerPod's new streaming methods. Next, let's talk about the database. ServerPod has a great ORM, which helps you communicate with the database using typesafe Dart code. It supports relations and database migrations. You define your models in easy to read YAML files. Here is an example of a model. Adding a table key lets you read and write the model to the database. In version 2.1 of ServerPod, we are expanding the model files to support default values. This not only makes the models more ergonomic to work with, but it's also very helpful when adding new fields to models and migrating your database tables. Let's have a quick look 
at adding a new field to a model. Let's add a founding date to our company. We want it to be non-nullable and we plan to add the companies right when they are founded. Hence, we set the default value to now. We are just setting default value to now and we're done. This will be a non-breaking database migration as the new database columns will have a default value set. But what if we want to have a different default value for the rows that are already in our database? To do this, we can set the additional default persist key. It takes a UTC formatted daytime value. Let's set it to the 1st of January 2020. Now, when we create a database migration, all existing rows will get the old date in 2020, but the new objects we create in Dart will use the current date. In addition to adding default values for date time, we also have support for booleans, integers, double strings, UUID, duration and enum values. Our third large feature, which we are releasing today, is our DevTools extension. It will put ServerPod Insights right inside VS Code without any configuration needed. To use it, start your server in debug mode through VS Code. Now you can open the Flutter tab in your sidebar. Here you will find a button with a ServerPod extension. Click it and Insights will open up and automatically connect to your running local server. Insights has a great log viewer, which groups your logs per session. It can also log database queries and is great for debugging your server. Finally, ServerPod 2.1 Expressionism includes several smaller new features and bug fixes. It adds support for WASM for building web apps, improves authentication, adds configuration options through environment variables and much more. ServerPod 2.1 is completely backward compatible. To upgrade from version 2.0, you just need to update your PubSpec files and you are good to go. That's ServerPod 2.1 Expressionism. I can't wait to see what you will build with our new features. Happy coding!